This is the MT Predictor Weekly Market Update for September 15th and uh, taking a look at the S&P here. The uh, pattern again that we have, we were wave 5 up anticipating the market should correct here. We have gotten an initial correction and then we've got a little subsequent uh, couple weeks where buying has come in here and if we take a look Let's go to our wave price tools here. I'm going to project up wave 2 or B here. And so we want to pay attention now. If you were short this from the weekly chart, then uh, you could protect yourself already with the break even stop there. And if you're looking for a, a new opportunity, We'll wait and see. What we would need to see here in this wave two or B level would be a red seller's candle um, uh, to appear in that area. So we don't have that yet. And we're heading into this week. Again, we talked about it a little bit last week, but this is a, a big week that we're heading into here. We've got the uh, Fed meeting beginning on Tuesday with the interest rate uh, announcement on Wednesday. That's the uh, 18th. And then the um, right after the announcement, they have the uh, meeting there. I think at uh, 2:30, the uh, press conference. And this will probably be, you know, this is a big one because this is probably this uh, Chairman Bernanke's last opportunity to have his say before he's going to be replaced. It looks like the leading candidate now is uh, Larry Summers, uh, possibly Janet Yellen. Uh, but Summers looks to be the leading candidate. He is a QE hawk. Um, but uh, we've got that on the table this week. Obviously, that is a potential market mover because we're going to get maybe an answer to tapering uh, if and when. And then uh, it is a quadruple witch uh, witching options expiration on Friday. And the tendency is the market does like to rally about 70% of the time into options expiration though quadruple witching uh, can be a little tricky and uh, this time of year usually uh, early September into early November you know the Dow likes to move higher obviously 2008 was a major exception um, but other than that over the last 10 years uh, it has been a good uh, time or a bullish time or bullish season if you will uh, for the stock market so we'll see how this plays out again uh, if you were watching our the our clients that own the uh, MT predictor software uh, also would have taken notice on the daily chart of the S&P we also had a, a decision point sell signal again this looks for market tops and market bottoms so it's coming off a nice long trade there into a potential top we knew the weekly was in heading into wave five here and so this one you could have captured about almost five times your initial risk there um, and even if you did move your stop down once you hit the 100 percent initial risk line uh, you never got stopped out you just made it right to the target there so uh, nice trade to be had there again those that had the software would have seen that um, let's look at uh, just look at the position of the Dow here. Uh, this is the daily chart. Again, there's that long, same long into the highs there. And again, the weekly chart we knew was uh, wave five up here. And so we were anticipating uh, a corrective move here. Typically, we'd see a correction back to this level. And so we'll see, whoops, again, uh, let me project up wave 2 or B here again using the tools and the software and we can see that the Dow now has had an initial decline and a rally uh, now it hasn't unfolded at this point in an ABC type correction but we were we are in an area of, of uh, resistance here now we'll wait and see if we get red sellers candles if they take this level out we may uh, test the uh, the highs here back where the wave fives are and that's true of the S&P and the, and the Dow here 
Um, and we saw that divergence if we look at the NQ. Kind of led the uh, led the charge there, um, as it has made new highs. So let's just see where we are here. <clears throat> it has now reached the typical wave five target. So uh, when the rest of the markets were hitting the minimum wave fives, we saw the the uh, Nasdaq instead of selling off like the other markets did, it held up pretty well in here and began to diverge and so it is making uh, new highs now in the typical wave 5 resistance again in an area we could expect a correction here we'll wait we don't have sellers overcoming buyers so we need a red sellers candle to appear we'll see how the week ends and what we got and we'll reevaluate there um, uh, just look at the daily chart here Uh, just a an ABC pattern there with the trend, so nothing really of note there. All right, let's take a look. Um, let's have a little fun with gold here for a minute. This happens to be a three-minute chart of of gold, but just some interesting uh, setups that that uh, came up. I'm just gonna move this down here. This area. was an interesting area here in gold just looking at the three minute uh, time period here for a second if we look and I choose the Elliott wave intermediate you can see we had this nice five wave pattern down Let me expand this here with a again decision point buy signal uh, this comes up because it's looking for a potential mar market bottom and it sees divergence. So we had a lower low in price with this higher low in the oscillator. The other thing that we had was we had a high volume spike come in here. This red high volume spike gives us a heads up that professionals may be stepping in here and buying. And you can see the move. If professionals are step in, stepping in during the day here, you, the moves typically are not small. They're usually large moves and that's uh, what we had here. Interestingly, if we go to the 15 minute chart, which would be the larger degree time frame, you can also see, uh, if you're intraday trading anyway, you can also see we went five waves down here, uh, began to correct, and then we pulled back here into this wave two or B area, and uh, we'll see. Uh, here's the wave three target up here. And we'll see if, if gold does uh, eventually reach this uh, 13, I'll we'll call it 1340, just below 1340 at 1337, 60 there. But again, there's a very low risk, high reward trade set up on the smaller time frames. But let's uh, look at our daily chart here. I remember we had our TS4, it was a standard trade set up, so our STF indicator was telling us the tr bigger trend would be down, and it was okay to take short trades there. Uh, this target is a large one, 12.6 times the initial risk, down around 11.4760. Um, and that, again, has progressed nicely. Now, uh, we do want to be careful, uh, and we'll see, we'll look at SOVA here in a minute as well. Uh, the uh, tendency during this uh, period of year is uh, a bullish one, um, especially we get into you know the end of September, early November. Uh, has been a very positive uh, period for uh, for silver. For silver, let's just take a look at silver here. Uh, daily chart. Let's look at the weekly chart there on silver. Again, we had our wave four that we were looking at, and we were anticipating as we got the red sellers candle telling us the sellers were now overcoming the buyers in this resistance area, and we'll project wave five down. Again, being uh, repetitive, you've seen this uh, over the last few weeks, but we are getting movement in our favor here. Here's your target uh, the minimum wave 5 target here 
and so we'll see how this finishes out around uh, 1760 in the uh, silver here and we'll see now if we can achieve that 100% initial risk line then that'd be an opportunity to move the stop from the initial position to the entry uh, for risk-free trade again uh, let's look at the euro US dollar and then we'll take a look at something called the euro dollar but here's the euro US dollar Again, we had that five wave pattern down here so we anticipate a correction at a minimum back to this wave 4 DP you can see we did get the uh, sell signal so the trend which was down here prior if this holds as resistance then the uh, trend should continue down now it's kind of gone sideways here and uh, we'll see the uh, the target down there at uh, 1833 uh, again uh, large target there. Uh, we'll see how this works out. Now if you were actually trading this you may have stopped at break even. Uh, if it's your policy to move your stop to break even when you achieve the 100% initial risk line. Um, but uh, you know we, we haven't officially taken out 3711. Uh, we, we've been kind of consolidating here. We looked at our next resistance points here and support in terms of the weekly chart and you've got a new one that's come in here right that same level so just around that uh, 135 should be some significant resistance if it does uh, move higher into that right now again it's just kind of going sideways uh, same with the dollar dollar hit a little uh, resistance um, but let's look at the uh, euro dollar here. Uh, it's the uh, GE. <coughs> this is the uh, the daily chart here, um, and the reason this is interesting is because the I think the last uh, 17 years, about 95% of this time uh, of the time between early March, late October, this thing. Uh, trends higher um, and the exceptions uh, I think was in 2005 there I think that was the only time it didn't it actually trended lower uh, so this was a significant low uh, here off of this is a daily chart and this was a weekly significant low there and you can see it spiked down there but ended up closing back above that level with some high volume um, and these uh, high volume spikes were telling us it was uh, professionals stepping in there as the price moved away from that level so we had a pullback here uh, let's look on the weekly chart here uh, so there's that major support there and we'll see if that uh, support continues to hold if this thing does uh, float higher here's the next major monthly resistance there I just want to look at the monthly chart for a second whoops uh, the monthly chart so the monthly chart you see had its five wave pattern up here did correct uh, not quite to the wave 4 DP but has now moved higher off of that level so that trend which was up after the pullback here um, uh, that trend may be continuing higher and so we'll see if we uh, get into these levels just below uh, 100 there in the euro dollar and this is simply the uh, uh, US dollars and foreign banks so um, just something to look at there and this is your lean hogs uh, again another kind of seasonal uh, uh, bullish uh, about nine out of ten uh, years here this thing has uh, moved higher during um, in this case late September all the way through late November it's tended to trend higher and we have a pattern here on the weekly chart where it sold off into a wave four um, the blue buyers candle here and you can see I projected wave five up and we'll see uh, how this one plays out there 
again one that's achieved 100 percent initial risk line so uh, anybody that has a software that might be trading this or have some type of position on this can move their stop up for a risk-free trade and we'll see how uh, this thing gets up into that 99 uh, 90 to 100 level uh, that will be a nice trade there as well all right so just kind of recap again this is going to be a bit a big week it could be a market changer or trend changer um, we have that uh, uh, Fed meeting on on uh, Wednesday at least the rate announcement and the uh, forecast and uh, whether or not we're going to get tapering again this is this Fed's last opportunity really to uh, um, to have his say and then uh, he'll going to be he's going to be re replaced um, and then we've got a quadruple witching options expiration again the market likes to rally into those options uh, expirations we're in a seasonal period and coming into a seasonal period where uh, stock market again with the exception of 2008 over the last 10 years has, has moved higher so uh, we'll see what we get um, and uh, keep your eye on the other economic data points as this picture hopefully will maybe get a little clearer at least for the market and we'll see what trend emerges uh, from here. Alright, have a good rest of your trading week and we'll see you back next weekend.